Studios, and today we're going to be going over what spline AK is. Or spine AK? No, spline, because spine is the thing in your back. Although we're going to be using it to make a spine, so spine, spline AK. I forgot to do the intro music. Do -do 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 -do. There we go. So, um, what is spline AK? Well, it's basically this. So you can grab pieces, you can grab the bottom and the top, and you can make stuff dance like this. That's its main purpose. Because on a normal rig, which doesn't have this, if you want to put her in that pose, you will bend this guy first, and then you will bend this guy back here, and then you will bend this guy a bit further, and then you'll bend this one further, and you'll keyframe, and then on the next one, you will go back and do this one this way, and move this one back here, and then until you get the right pose and then you bend this guy back up and basically it's a bit of a tedious process. Although it's still functional, it still can be used, I still use it. Honestly, that's why my rigs don't really have Spine AK because I only really implement Spine AK if I really need it for some kind of dance. Usually I prefer to pose them like this because it's more how your body moves, you know, it's kind of, it goes forward from your hips. But both are useful and so on when I need to, I add this to my rigs. Uh, because this does have some problems, like it's, you know, it's fine, but it does behave unpredictably sometimes. Like it's, you'll be animating, you're like, oh, that wasn't what I wanted at all. But it is fun to play with. So, let's get to setting this up. First, I will make a new file, and I'll just show you quickly what Spline AK. If you haven't watched my Spline tutorial, uh, Spline animation tutorial, I recommend watching that. It kind of covers it. But let's go quick, easily through this. So let's get our pen tool. Let's move into our right view and go control click. Oh, we don't have to control click. Yeah, we don't have to control click. And make two points and drag them out. And go back to move tool. And now we have these two points, which you can scale so that they are, so the length is to your liking about this is about right and then go to shift c and we go join tool and we control click however many splines we want and we should probably not parent that to the spline and then we right click on this joint and we go character tags and we go ok spline and we go tag and we drag our spline into the spline and we go drag our end into the end and you see it snaps to the spline and now if we get spline and we go to point mode and the move tool, we can now move these guys around and they'll move the spline around. As you can see, they don't stretch out to follow the whole length of the spline. They only stretch out as far as they can. And that's because here we can change this. Default is fit, but if you want, you can change it to equal and then it'll stretch out with the spline length. Obviously in your character animation, when you do this, you can also change it here to say, like right now, if I grab this top controller, I drag it up, nothing happens. It just tries to come up to it as close as it can along the spline. But if you change this to equal, and then you move the top, it'll stretch out with it, which is pretty useful sometimes if you want to animate that position. It's kind of bendy character. Depending, again, if you're doing a bendy character like this, like someone from Fantastic Four, this is a must. You have to use this kind of control setup. Um, if you notice, I get stuff moving back to its default positions. That's because I select it, I go to coordinates, and I go freeze all before I start moving anything. Very important, useful tip. I'll probably remind you again throughout this tutorial to do it. So back to our spline. So this is pretty much it. Then you just go handles, and you go add, add, and you go create, create. And it'll make two nulls, so you don't have to be in point mode. Add each of the handles. The difference with these nulls, they can't scale. Uh, the handles, so you're kind of stuck with where the handles are. So you got to scale them before you finish this and pick what scale. Oops, you got to pick what scale you want these handles to be. No, you can't scale them. So you got to pick what scale you want them to be before you add these controllers. Uh, you can obviously remove them, but that's pretty much it. That's the gist of this part of the tutorial. Okay, so let's do this now on an actual rig. <coughs> As you can see, I don't have any controllers, so you should be doing this on controllers, but I'm gonna show you this on joints because it's just easy to get your head around. And then you basically do the same thing on controllers. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna create a null. We're gonna create two nulls. Hold the shift key with a hip selected. 
it'll be under the hips and go reset PSR. If you don't have this command, please bind it to a shortcut. It's super convenient or drag it into your UI. And we're gonna call this bottom. Then select our spine two or whatever is wherever you want the end of it. I prefer it to be on spine two because I like to control where the shoulders are with this controller. And shift, make a null, reset PSR and call this top. And drag these guys out. Oops, not into that, just out of the hierarchy. Next, we are gonna hide our joints and hide our mesh. By the way, if you've noticed here, it's very easy for me to select joints right now because I have the subdivision surface locked. I have it in a layer and it's locked. So I can't click on it, which makes it easier to select joints or controllers or whatever it is without accidentally clicking the mesh. Very useful tip. So let's hide our mesh and our joints. And let's go to side view. And we have these two white nulls, which is our top and bottom. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our pen tool in Bezier mode. And we're gonna turn on our snapping here, enable snap and axis snap. And as you can see, a little circle appears, so it snaps. And we drag and drag a handle. And then we drag and drag the second one. There you go. And we have our spline exactly on top of our joints. Very handy. Enable all this back. Go back into our 3D view and turn off snapping. The next step is we go to our hips and we go right click. By the way, I already have IK set up for the legs and arms here. If you don't, then your legs will start moving with your other joints. So we right click and we go character and IK spline and we add our spline spline spine spline and we add our end is spline too. No movement, that's good. Always a good idea to turn this skin on and off to make sure there's no movement. Then we're gonna, so right now if we get our points in the move tool, there you go, it's already working, wonderful. Now here, we will go to handles and we'll go add add because we have two points, so we have two handles and we'll drag top into top. Whoops, nope, we'll drag top into bottom and then we'll drag bottom into top. And now again, we turn the skin on and off and it looks like we're still all in the same place, which is great because sometimes this stuff deforms and you have to turn all your stuff off and then move these hand controllers back into the joints to make sure everything's where it's meant to be. But right now, we're lucky and everything's in the right place. Because if you don't check this, like every time you add control, you should always check that all your stuff is still, that your mesh is still in the same place when you turn it off the skin deformer, because otherwise you'll have a pain adjusting stuff later, or adding new controllers or whatever it is. So very important to keep an eye on this. So let's go further then. Right now we can grab the top and move it. Awesome. Don't forget to select these two go to coordinates and freeze all. And now when we move the top, and then we can move the bottom, we can just go tilde X for reset PSR and there are back to where they be. Now you'll notice when we rotate them, they work, but when we twist, nothing happens. So here um, in the spline IK thing, there is this thing called twist and you can turn it to object and then it will work as you expect it to work, except, well, not always. Sometimes it gets weird behavior, which is kind of what I was talking about with, um, sometimes when you move stuff, it'll flip around. So it's a good idea to now get your, um, whatever your top spine is and select that and then control click on top and go shift C and go PSR constraint and add this. Now, when you move your top, well, except the problem is you'll see that the top also stretches. So, but it does now remain and rotate carefully with where you want your stuff to be facing. So here, just turn off your position. Another position will be controlled by the spline while the rotation will be controlled by the null. So this is, and you do the same thing with your hips. So you go hips and then you control bottom and you go shift C and you go PSR constraint and you add it and you turn off position. 
And now when you move it, your rotation sticks with the body. It's great making dances like this, isn't it? So fun to watch. And obviously you can do, you know, pelvis tilts and stuff. And so yeah, handy stuff. And then just don't forget to get these two nulls and change them to something else. So make them circles and X, Y and scale them up. Maybe X, Y up, there you go. And now you can grab the controllers as long as you're, there you go. And that's it, that's pretty much what Spline IK is. Um, yeah, and this way you don't get, because we have the constraints, we don't get that weird flipping that we had before. Whoops. But yeah, useful stuff. And obviously you can always just turn it off and then this does nothing. And you can go back to animating stuff with your forward kinematics, like you did before. Um, so it's a good way to tie this stuff to a controller. Don't forget, if you make a controller overall, don't forget to also throw the strength of these guys in as well. Otherwise, your stuff will be affected by them. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope it was useful. If you enjoy my tutorials, don't forget to check out my other free tutorials, which I have lots of on my website. Also, if you actually go to my website and you click on stuff, sometimes there's more helpful tips in these posts than there are just on the YouTube channel. And if you like that, also don't forget to check out my free rigs. There's some bony, beefy, two-legged stuff. And there's also some unfree rigs, which cost starting about 25 bucks. And if you like my stuff and you want me to make more of it, buy one. And then I'll be able to make more stuff. Hope you're having a good one. I'll see you next time.